Welcome to a special report here on KEZI 9 News. We are breaking into programming this afternoon for a major announcement from the University of Oregon about its new head coach. A press conference just got underway over at Autzen Stadium. We're going to take you to that live right now. It's what our winning football culture is all about. We found that person in Mark Helfrich. Mark has 17 years of college coaching experience at the very highest levels, and he has been vitally important to our success here the past four years. He's a man devoted to his family, to his players, to his university and community. And I'm excited to see Mark lead the Ducks to even greater heights. It is my honor and pleasure to introduce the new football coach at the University of Oregon, Mark Helfrich. Uh, thank, uh, thank you to Rob, and uh, I would also echo his uh, comments about President Godfredson for um, giving me the opportunity of a lifetime. Um, also, a huge thank you to my family who's here, my wife Megan, and our son Max, and daughter Maggie, who are actually under control at the moment, which is good. Uh, love you guys, and, and thank you so much for, for everything you've done uh, throughout this whole process, as well as making my life complete. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, my parents, um, for making me the person I am today. My, my father passed away last year, and today would be a huge day for him. Uh, somewhere he's very proud. Um, I also want to thank Chip Kelly for, for bringing me here four years ago. A uh, great friend of mine, a guy who, who I look forward to watching his career. Uh, tremendous amount of success in Philadelphia. Um, and just great man. Taught me much more in, in the past four years than, than we could discuss here today. There are so many other reasons why, why today is special to me. Uh, growing up in Oregon, uh, raised about two hours from here, uh, playing, playing pickup football in Autzen before there was all this other stuff around Autzen Stadium, and dreaming of someday playing in, in Autzen Stadium. Luckily for Duck fans, I was never allowed to play in, Ducks, uh, in Autzen Stadium. Uh, they, uh, Coach Brooks, Coach Blotty at that time made a, a very good evaluation. But a uh, couple high school games in there, and uh, that, that was the extent of that dream. But um, my dad went to school here, played here. My uncle played football here. Uh, my brother, his wife, so many other, my, my mom, uh, so many other family and, and friends that, that went to school here just, just make this home. Coaching uh, at Oregon is the, is the pinnacle for me. Um, I uh, kind of fell in love with the notion of, of being, becoming a coach when I, I played at, at Marshfield High School in Coos Bay. Uh, for, for Kent Weigel and, and just seeing the, the influence that he had on, on thousands and thousands of young, young people. And that's something that, that I take, take with me to this day. It's an unbelievable honor to be around our players every day and uh, just teaching the value of hard work, the value of trying to control what you can control and just, just having a great time doing is something that, that we, we really try to, try to push. The relationships uh, formed between coach and player, player to player, coach to coach, or something that I think are unmatched in, in any other business uh, than athletics. It's kind of the ultimate reality TV for, for some people, but there's real lives, and that that's, uh, means a ton to me. I think, it's, I think it's special. I just saw Brian Jackson over here somewhere, a guy from Hoover, Alabama, a guy from Coos Bay, Oregon, and a guy from LA can all get together and fight for the same goal. That's, that's a, a neat deal to me. Um, because of the foundation laid by Rich Brooks, uh, Mike Bellotti, Chip Kelly, the incredible support of, of Phil Knight and his family, Pat Kilkenny and his family, everybody uh, in the Oregon athletic family. This place is known among the nation's elite for many reasons. Uh, there are so many other reasons why this is a special place to me. It's, it's how we play. It's our fan support, again, exhibited by today. It's our, it's our, our world-class facilities. It's the, the international reputation of this university. Um, the other group that I need to to single out here, and some of them are here today, is our coaching staff. Uh, each one of those guys could be somewhere else. And to have uh, their faith in me, that means more than I can express. And I thank those guys in a, in a huge way. It's the former players of all ages and abilities. Uh, you guys are, are, are welcome around here anytime, and this is your program. Mostly, for me, like I said, it's about, it's about our student athletes. A couple of them are here, and I had an unbelievable meeting with those guys last night. We have a special group of guys, and their unshakable commitment to each other, uh, again, thank you, and that's, again, what makes this the best job in America. If I, had a, if I was a recruit and I had a chance to be one of those guys' teammates, I'm on board. I'd jump in, I'd ask where I sign, and get on the next flight. 
Going forward, we, we will attack in all phases. We, we will embrace innovation as we will continue to do. And we're gonna strive our best to win each and every day. Um, to the great fans of this program and the university community, I promise you we will work as hard as we possibly can to make you proud. Uh, it's an honor for me to be chosen as a caretaker of Oregon football. It's a job certainly bigger than any one person, one player, or, or any team. Thank you again, and, and go Ducks. Are there any questions, uh, any questions uh, first of all, for Rob Mullins? And uh, again, we'll go shortly then uh, due to time constraints with Coach Alfred. Hey, Rob. Rob. Uh, how many interviews did you conduct? How many internal candidates were there? And, and going in, was Mark perhaps first among equals, if nothing else? Well, uh, we talked to an awful lot of people. We conducted five in-person interviews, um, but talked to several other people on the phone. Uh, as you might imagine, there was lo lots of calls. Um, what was the second part of the question? Yeah, uh, we, we had multiple internal candidates. I don't want to identify a number and, and get into that, but we had multiple internal candidates. You know, we, we've got a great staff. We got great student athletes, and you know, a lot goes into producing the success that we've had. So naturally, we're going to have uh, multiple internal candidates. Uh, hey, Mark's a great coach. Um, we got to visit with a lot of great coaches, and, and what we learned through this process um, reaffirmed exactly what we thought about Mark. So we went through a process because we felt it was important to do our due diligence, and everything kept pointing back to, to Mark Helfrich, and that's why we're happy to be here today announcing Mark. Obviously, you said on Wednesday the timing was less than ideal. How much pressure did you feel in terms of to get this done quickly, and how much pressure did you feel from Salem with the, with the new state law to, yeah. to, to kind of go through Well, those. I'm not a policymaker, um, but, but, but I work at an institution that has policies, and you know that was at the forefront of what we do. So I wouldn't say we feel any pressure. We also didn't feel any pressure from PACE. Again, it was important. It was a factor because of where we are in the recruiting cycle, but it was not the factor. Uh, number one for us is to have long-term success. Um, so we were bound to, found the, to find the right person. Um, and yes, time is a factor, but it was not the leading factor. You just sort of spoke to this with Adam, but how were you able to conduct the searching, uh, coaching search so quickly? Well, you know, these things are, you're always thinking about these things. This didn't start on Wednesday at 7.15 when I got the call. I mean, you know, we were very aware a year ago that this was a possibility very aware again shortly after the Fiesta Bowl that it was a possibility. So, you know, the wheels are always spinning. It's, you don't start the clock, you know, when you get the official resignation. You know, these things are always happening. So while, you know, people want to say it, it took X number of days, these things, there's a process that starts long before that. So, um, you know, we were very thorough, again, internally, externally. I talked to a lot of people, NFL people, agents, scouts, ADs, other coaches. Um, and so we, had, we gathered a lot of input, and fortunately for us, it all pointed to one person, and he happened to live right here in the same zip code. Tom. Right, right here, Rob. Hey, Tom. Um, you talked the other day about continuity, and you thought it was going to be one of the factors, but it, but it wasn't going to be the only factor. In the end, how big did it end up being in your mind? And now that you've moved Mark up, how big in the overall picture do you see it being in the regards to Oregon football history? Oh, hey, Mark's a great football coach, and that's why he's named the head football coach today. I mean, he, as I said earlier, he exemplifies everything we want. Uh, excellence, leadership, character. So that's why we're here. Continuity is a, it, it was a bonus. The fact that he's got deep roots in Oregon is a bonus. Um, but it was not the driving factor. We wanted an outstanding leader to continue the tradition of Oregon football, and that's why Mark Helfrich is the head coach today. But in continuity has played a role in our success, and again, it is a nice bonus. Aside from the continuity, you kind of just touched on it. What specifically makes you think that Mark is the right guy to continue this run of, of success at Oregon? Well, I, I mean, I've had the opportunity to, to observe Mark uh, in so many settings in the past two and a half years. Uh, the past four years, the, the tremendous success we've had, as Mark even said, that, that takes a lot of people. It's not one person. And so uh, a lot of those folks are here today, whether it's players, assistant coaches. Um, but I've had the good fortune to see Mark in a lot of different settings, whether it's you know, in the office, in the locker room, on the practice field, uh, setting the tone for the process that makes this program successful. So you know, he has a clear vision. Um, he, he has, he's shown an ability to make difficult decisions. Um, and you know, that's what we want, somebody who really wants to be the caretaker of this program and make sure that we keep moving forward. 
When was the last interview conducted and when was the decision finalized? Uh, the last interview, the last in-person interview was conducted on Friday and I would say the decision process started Friday nights when we really were getting after it. Yes, you, mentioned, you just mentioned seeing him make some tough decisions. Was there a moment in, in his time here, maybe in the past four years, a specific moment when, when you saw something in him where it clicked that he could be the head coach that, yes, this, this would work down the road? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know that I can signify. So I, one, I've only been here two and a half years, so uh, first year and a half, I can't count. But I don't think there was any one moment. In, in, in my role, you know, you, again, this process doesn't start for any sport, not just football. You know, when a, when a visiting team comes here, we pay attention, you know, how, how a team acts, how coaches act, when they get off the bus, when they come into the arena, how they treat our facilities, how they treat our staff. Do the same. I, I watch a game differently than some people. I don't pay attention to everything that goes on between the lines. I pay attention to what happens outside the lines. How do coaches carry themselves? How do they handle themselves in the press conference? You know, how, how are they around, you know, the fans and the donors? So, you know, I've been able to observe him in all those instances, and um, you know, that's why he's here today. Getting paid by the question again. Exactly. <laughs> Jeez. Is his uh, quota up, Dave? How many has he got? Uh, Helps him such like a different guy in temperament from Chip. How are they different leaders? Can you contrast their leadership styles? Well, I mean, they're different personalities. They're different people. But again, our focus is on the process. And, you know, they, they both have a very clear vision on what they want. They have very high standards. Um, and again, they're, they can sell that vision. Uh, and, they can, and they can make the difficult decisions to make sure that we get to the end of that process. Um, and, and that's what this is about. And that's why this culture is unique. I mean. Uh, Mark's, the, the, the team meeting last night was outstanding. Uh, and while, without getting into the specifics, the energy from the student athletes and the clarity about who we are and where we're going um, just solidified that this is the exact right decision today. Rob, if you can, can you uh, lay out the terms of the contract, years? Uh, and did Chip have anything, any words of wisdom uh, to you personally about Mark? Um, the term, we will, I think we'll have copies of the contract for you. Uh, so it's, it's a five-year contract, uh, $9 million, but I think we'll have copies of those later for you. Um, what was this? Oh, did Chip have any words of wisdom? Uh, I haven't talked to Chip since he became the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles, but obviously um, in, in the two and a half years that we worked together, you know, we had plenty of conversations about staff and, uh, and why we're successful. Yes, yeah, so it looks like you've got a couple positions to fill now, <clears throat> possibly wide receiver, coach, defensive line. Uh, how's that process going to go? And I'm sure it's a joint decision between you and Coach Helfrich now, but. He'd probably be the best person to answer that question. Okay. Yes. Same <laughs> Same yeah, that's a, yes, that's a process we've, we've already begun. And um, there's so many things at this time of year that are fluid in this business. There, you know, there'll probably be another wave of hirings and potentially firings uh, in the NFL uh, following these next couple weeks. And that'll be announced here as soon as we, we uh, get those things finalized. C Coach. Yeah. Um, what's your response to the notion that Coach Kelly basically was calling all the offensive plays over the last four years? My, my response to that notion would be that'd be true. Uh, uh, you know, so much of our deal, so much of, of why we're effective is we don't, we don't worry about that stuff. We don't sit down and go, hey, Steve Greatwood was responsible for 47% for of this idea and somebody else was responsible for, this is about us and we and our. And uh, as soon as we start worrying about that, th you know, that kind of stuff, that's where we get off, off track. Um, uh, you know, I'm very comfortable calling plays. And there's several guys on our staff that are very comfortable calling plays. And we're not worried about that. We're, about, we're worried about the process and worried about how we go about our business. And all that other stuff will take care of itself. Continuity seems to be a recurring theme that we've heard from Rob and, and, and from you. How much of what's going on last year and the years prior that you're familiar with, with Oregon football, are you going to keep going, uh, keep together going forward? In terms of? Are you going to try to keep the whole thing together? And sure, sure. 
For the most part, I mean, again, kind of going back to the question about our, our personality, we're different different guys, and the the things that have made this place special are this place and these people, and again, you look around, and there's so many members of the athletic department, that's very, I mean, again, very humbling, the response that's, that's gone on here. Um, but our staff is, is outstanding. These guys, again, could be anywhere in the country almost, and they've chosen to be here with us and, and with these players. And, and again, I think that speaks volumes to, to what we're all about. You, you kind of just touched on it, um, the personality difference between yourself and, and Chip. We see what we see uh, in the media. How would you describe your difference, and how does that affect how, what you'll do as a head coach versus how Chip was as a head coach? <laughs> I have no idea. Um, I think you, you might want to ask the players some of that stuff. I think we're going to, again, it's going to be the 99.2%. I, I bet 99.2% of the time we're in lockstep. You know, it's going to be that 0.8% where you go, oh, that's totally different. You know, I won't wear a visor. I'll eat more vegetables. Um, uh, I, you know, there's, we're about a process. You know, we know the end game, and, and there's, there's different coaches that have been successful that, that of all different shapes and sizes, personalities, temperaments, uh, and, and it's about the, the players and the process. What is the point eight percent? Other than advisory, that's point eight, point eight. Yeah, uh, it's a little more. It's a little more. I don't know. That's for that's for maybe you guys to to decide and define. And uh, kind of going off that, are there any uh, immediate changes you see that you're going to want to make this year? Any uh, things you're going to want to change from years past as head coach? I don't think there's anything um, that's going to be outwardly apparent. You know, I think any year you, you streamline stuff, whether it's how you uh, recruit, how you, you know, run practice, how, just all of the, the kind of the, the littler things, the finer things that try to you refine your process. Um, but I don't think there's going to be anything outwardly, you know, hugely different. We're not going to get in the wishbone. We're not going to, you know, be under center with four tight ends. And, you know, there's, there's not going to be too much noticeably different, I don't think, to the layman. Just to clarify, because you, you commented earlier, I think that the, the staff situation would kind of be finalized and you'd announce it uh, later. But you also have I mentioned a couple times here how guys could be other places, and it would seem to imply that a lot of guys are going to stick around. I'm very much hoping that is the case. Yeah, what I meant is, is our, our staff is very talented. These guys have had a ton of opportunities throughout their careers, uh, not only now, but in the past of, of ha you know, having the opportunity to go other places and they've chosen to stay here. And I think, again, it's a belief in this place. Uh, uh, and again, the, the, the players, the, the, the Oregon brand, whatever you want to call it, is a powerful thing. It's a great place to live. It's a tremendous university to work for, administration, support, et cetera. Uh, that means a lot to me that those guys are willing to stick it out. Um, what I meant by the, the, the process here is, is right now, you know, we have two holes to fill is what it looks like. Uh, and, and we will do our best to, to make that happen expeditiously. Well, uh, Jerry Azanero has departed, and obviously Chip Kelly has departed. It's been in the news. <laughs> Who? When do you get fitted for your personalized hot tub? <laughs> uh, we did not talk about that. Um, Mullins acknowledged you had a couple opportunities to interview for other head coaching jobs this season, earlier this off season. Uh, was that ever tempting for you? And, you know, is that something over the last four years? I mean, what was the, obviously you're very emotional about this. What was the in particular kind of kept you here when, like you said, so many others have had opportunities as well? I didn't say so many others, so many other coaches. Yeah, uh, I love this place. Um, uh, again, the, the, the biggest thing about this place that is special right now is, is our, our players. Our, I mean, our, to be around our guys, I believe so much in them. Uh, and, and I, it's, it's really hard to convince a group of guys that age to not think about, you know, eight months from now. It's, it's to think about the next minute and the next hour and the next day and to focus on what really matters. And these guys have, an, again, just what I talked about earlier, just an unshakable commitment to that and, and to each other. And it's, it's, it's very special. Um, uh, my family's here. Uh, are happy here. My wife is happy here. I've learned very quickly that that is the most important thing in all of this. No, uh, but this is a special place to me. Um, and we talked about a lifetime contract. Was not able to get that done. And but maybe we'll earn that here down the road. 
Uh, just uh, you mentioned a difference in personalities. Will that extend to the play calling? Do you think you'll be maybe rolling the dice on fourth down as often, passing up on field goals when you're inside the 40, those kinds of things? Or do you think you'll be a little bit more conservative in those situations? To be determined. Um, we're going to try to, you know, we're going to try to score. We're going to try to win, and um, in, in, you know, to in those situations. And more importantly, we're going to try to prepare great. And that's something that I think that we're very similar. You, you know, all those other situations are are moments that that get excruciatingly analyzed uh, post fact. So, uh, you know, and I'm willing to take the beating on that very well. Coach Alfred here. Mark here in the back. Um, okay. What is the, the Mark Helfrich mission statement as you move forward now? Um, also, can you talk about Scott Frost as your offensive coordinator, maybe what his duties will be? And of course, uh, will you allow us into practice now? That was three questions. Limit to one question. One question, I'll take the first one, was my mission is to go recruiting as fast as possible. Uh, our mission right now, uh, the number one mission as far as our priorities is, is making sure our players feel good about everything. And again, we're going to surround them. You know, we're going to lose a couple support staff members, a couple people that, that uh, you know, were very integral parts of these guys' lives. And we're going to hire great people. Uh, these guys deserve nothing less. And to, to make them feel comfortable with that, which I think they are, and we talked about that a little bit last night, um, uh, that's, that's kind of job one, take care of our guys on campus. The second thing is we have to, to go recruit. We're going to do that hopefully here uh, shortly. Uh, and, and finish up this class, not only the guys that we have committed, but, but a few, few other slots to fill. Mark, uh, in the back. I was just wondering if you've had a this is actually happening moment yet, if, or if this is it, or something like that, something that has told you in, <laughs> that you are um, the guy. Uh, I guess, yeah. Uh, there's been a couple of them that, that have been kind of bizarre. and just. Again, I'm, I'm a pretty simple guy, and I love what I do. I love working with these guys, and it's just it's bizarre that people would take my picture while I'm standing there drinking a bottle of water. That's you people have a problem. That's, no, but uh, uh, this is exciting. I mean, this is awesome. Uh, I'm very excited uh, to to roll, um, and uh, you know, I'm a part a part of a very big operation, and I you know take that very seriously. Mark, you've, you've been with a lot of coaches in your career. How much has Chip Kelly, uh, what he does, influenced you now that you're going to be a head coach? A ton, a ton. He's, he's been a huge influence on me. Um, you know, again, that's one of those magic, I don't know the answer to that. I don't, you know, if it's 42% or whatever. But I've had, I've had the pleasure of, of working with and for a ton of great people going back to, like I talked about in high school, uh, where I went to school, Southern Oregon. Um, uh, and again, you, you just take a little bit of everybody with you. Uh, you, you know, you look at some people and you're like, okay, I do that a little bit differently or, man, I need to do that when I'm a head coach. Um, but again, I've just kind of enjoyed every, every situation I've been in, worked hard and, and uh, you know, hopefully we'll continue to do, the, to, to, uh, do that. Hey, Coach. Will you hand the offensive play calling over to Scott or will you do it? Uh, we have a plan and we will uh, address that kind of uh, probably after spring ball. Um, there's... There's again a lot, of, a lot of different things that go into that. There's kind of depends on on who the other hires are. I'm very confident, excuse me, <coughs> confident in a couple guys that that, that again the, the Oregon brand is so amazing in terms of the the, the uh, caliber of people that have been interested in in coming here, uh, and pretty confident in in getting that done. I just don't want to, you know, lay it out sure. yet. Yeah, you know, the spring game a segue into that uh, seemed to take a quantum leap up with the emphasis on the military. Mm -hmm. Was that mostly all Chip Kelly? If so, or do you plan to keep that going? And that's a, that's a two part question. What, the specific thing, that you, one thing about Chip Kelly that you took with you that is most prominent in your mind that you learned, you said you take from, some from everybody, but. Okay, I will go in reverse order. Um, the number one thing is in evaluation of players, we, we're not gonna make exceptions for for character, we want we want again. We want great people in our program. We have great people in our program, and and that's what they and you deserve. Uh, and and we're not gonna we're not gonna compromise that. Uh, then what was my next spring game? That was a departmental thing. Certainly, uh, you know, uh, fully endorsed by Chip. Uh, and and I would have 
you know, every intention of continuing that. It was an incredible, uh, you know, scene. Those games leading up to and afterward was was awesome. Uh, my my uncle who uh, played football here was also in the Navy, and and that you know that he 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 specifically. Uh, called that out a couple times and how much that meant and uh, obviously we, <laughs> we thank them for everything they've done. In the back, Phil Milani. Uh, you mentioned recruiting several times here. What is it that you say to a kid in his living room who thought maybe he was coming to Oregon to play for a chip? He's coming to Oregon to, to be an Oregon duck and to, to you know, and all that encompasses. We're, we're, we are 100% uh, same philosophically, uh, you know everything that we're about. We want the same type of character, kids. Uh, we're going to treat. We're going to recruit character. We're going to recruit attitude. We're going to recruit toughness, and hopefully those guys are fast too. I think Warren had touched. Vane appreciates the fast guys. Warren had touched on this, but I don't know if we got an answer. Is opening practices to the media and the fans something in your plans? Talking about injuries. Obviously I've been was... constantly thinking about what would the media want. That's. That's all I've been the thinking about. The fans, too. I mean, a lot of uh, – Chip took some flack from boosters and whatnot and, and asked – and people wanted to get in there and see, is, are you going to open it at any point? Practice? Yes. You will. Yeah. <laughs> um, again, so many of those things are, are out of even – you know, out of our control. Uh, the, the way that we practice, the time that we practice, how, uh, where we practice, there's – you guys have been in there. There's not a – you know, there's, it's a safety thing for, for – for some, you know, on some level, um, but we'll, we'll we'll cross that bridge. The, the, the duties of the head coach uh, take on a lot of trappings of uh, boosters, um, meetings with alumni, those kinds of things. What is your, what what are your thoughts on that? How much of a distraction will that? I shouldn't say distraction, but how yeah. much time do you think that will consume of your daily daily schedule? That's part of the job, you know. I, again, I grew up in this state, and I know I know what Oregon football and Oregon athletics mean uh, to, you know, a guy in Coos Bay, Oregon, or a guy in Hepner or wherever. Uh, and and that's a you know a big part of it. I know that there's houses divided and all that stuff, and that that's part of the deal. You know, we want everybody involved, um, and uh, you know I, I know that that's a huge part of it. I have a couple plans for how we can deal with. I know some of those. Uh, uh, not disgruntled, maybe uh, uh, unhappy groups uh, of people, and, and we're going to do our best to, to make everybody feel involved. We've got a couple more minutes for questions for Coach Alfred. Over here, Chris. Coach, uh, have you talked to Coach Kelly since, uh, since he left and since the announcement came? And if you have, ha has he expressed anything to you as far as well wishes or anything like that? I have, and he has. and. Uh, we have a, you know, we have a great relationship. Chip will be a, a, a lifelong friend. Um, uh, respect him a ton, and again, wish him absolutely nothing but the best. You mentioned a recruiting philosophy in general, but have you talked to the to the guys that are committed or considering you guys right now, and what's been the reaction in general from from that pool of players? It's been great. It's been great. The, the, again, there's so many so many things that we we talked about that that make this place special and, and unique that have nothing to do with, with one person. And, that, and that's no disrespect to anybody. You know, everybody always, well, you know, let's talk about, you know, we're talking about this place, these people, these, these players. Uh, that's what makes this place special. And, and we're going to do everything we possibly can to, to keep it rolling. Sean? Coach, do you think the responsibility stress will change who you are as a person, like the, the challenge of that notion? <laughs> My wife said that's not allowed to happen. No. Um, Again, I, I think that's where uh, you, you can't answer that question, you know, 100% sincere and maybe uh, confidently, but we have such a great staff, uh, such a great support staff that, that you know, we're going to work together through all that stuff. And, uh, you know, the, the, there's a couple other decisions to be made. I'll have to care about special teams, right, Oz? Okay. No, uh, that's a joke. I care about special teams all the time. Um, and But... That's just part of it, you know. That's part of all of this. Is is when I got back from recruiting last week, I, I was dealing with a totally different set of circumstances than if it wasn't, you know. I was just the just the offensive coordinator, or whatever. 
similar, similar lines of questioning. There's all sorts of different new responsibilities for a head coach that you don't get as an assistant and as a coordinator. Are there certain responsibilities specifically that you're really looking forward to and, and on the flip side, ones that you're kind of dreading now having to deal with? Have you thought about the added burden that, that is now on your shoulders that you know, only goes on a head coach? Sure. I, I, again, uh, the biggest thing that's, that's, I think, simultaneously exciting and sometimes unnerving is just the players. You know, our, our kids have 105 brothers now. Uh, and, and again, I take that very seriously and, and love it. Um, uh, you know, by the same token, we're going to have guys that have a certain level of, of expectation from an academic standpoint, behavioral standpoint, all, all that stuff they will, they will be held to. Um, and this is obviously the best part of the job. Right. I was gonna. I, w I was. I was gonna start, but I didn't. Okay. We have two more questions, and the first one's gonna be Jerry Thompson. I don't know if you've had time to think about this, and I, I haven't done my fact checking too much. But you may be the first native Oregonian other since Shy Huntington. Uh, Shy, good man. John Warren, forty-two. Okay. John Warren. How does? I was, gonna, I was just gonna add that, but <laughs> <laughs> Don Reed, I don't think so. Anyway, again, how? How much does that mean to you? And maybe a little more emphasis on Oregon players. I know you're looking for character and talent <laughs> we, first. Yeah, we want the best possible player, and, and uh, it, I mean, it's it's awesome. I mean, it, the the outpouring of support from from people that you know in Coos County, where I didn't even know we had the internet or Facebook or any of that stuff, has been incredible. And and uh, uh, yeah, it does mean you know it's more to me than just a a job or whatever that yeah there's a absolutely there's there's special meaning for that or to that um but that can't sway our evaluations of bad quarterbacks last question for alex mark can you just go about here um hiding you're 17 you're playing quarterback in marshfield high school can you just talk about if you'd gotten a chance to tell that kid go back in time and talk to that kid and what he'd be able to be here today. Play he golf and be like Casey Martin would have been my advice for him. Uh, I would go back and tell him that, you know, I, I have absolutely, I've been the luckiest man in the world. Um, I have zero, you know, regrets or whatever the right word is for, for anything that I would change. Uh, I have a great family, a great wife, an incredible job. And, uh, you know, I, that's my philosophy is I try to just work for that every single day. Thanks, Coach Alfred. Thank you. Thank you.